Hi guys, today we're going to go over managing locations in Limbal. So to get started, go to the Manage Locations tab. Now if you don't see that here, that means that you're not a super user and you don't have the privileges to manage locations. So go talk to whoever set up Limbal and either have them make you a super user or have them come in and actually make the changes. So the first thing we're going to do is change the first location to the name of our building. So we're going to go ahead and say Building A and we're in Utah. The next thing we need to do is set the right time zone. Mountain Standard is actually the right time zone for Utah, so I won't change that. But if I was over in California, I'd most definitely need to change that. And the reason why that's important is because the scheduler, the PM scheduler, every night goes ahead and assigns PMs out based on the time zone. So, for example, if you're over in Europe, you most definitely need to change the time zone. That way you're getting the PMs at the right time. And if you don't know what your time zone is, simply click this here and it'll tell you your GMT offset. And then on this list here, you can go ahead and find the right corresponding one. The next portion of a location is hours of operation per week. This basically says how, by default, how many hours are the assets running at that location. And that's helpful for certain ma maintenance calculations like mean time between failure um, and things like that. Now you can always go to an asset and specify it and say this asset actually runs 120 hours a week. Um, that's completely up to you, but this gives a default for that location. The next part is report a problem URL. This is how you handle work requests in Limble. And to see what that looks like, we'll go ahead and click that. This basically allows anyone in your organization to report a problem to your maintenance team. And again, it's anyone in your organization. They do not have to have a login to Limble to use this. And we actually have a tutorial that goes over work requests and reporting problems in detail, so I won't touch onto this very much. But uh, it basically is just a work request portal and how you get that portal is going to the location in here. So now that we have this building set up, let's go ahead and add a second one. Let's say this is building B and it's in California. And now I'm going to set the correct time zone. And now we have both of those locations here. Now the reason why that's important is because in, when you're managing roles, you can go ahead and say, all right, I want John to be a manager at location B and not a manager at location A. Now when John logs in, he cannot see anything at building A. And when Todd logs in, he cannot see anything in building B. And that's really important and really helpful so that you can break apart the responsibilities and when users don't get overwhelmed by seeing everything throughout your entire organization. And then again, that's really important for medium to large size enterprises that have 30 buildings across the world or 100 buildings across the world. You can break it apart so that you're not overwhelming people. Now, locations don't have to be a specific building. Locations really are just a way for you to log logically break things apart. You can actually have, um, say you have multiple production lines and you want each production line to be a location. And that's helpful because you can pull reports based on uh, solely a single location. And so uh, don't, don't get stuck on, oh, it has to be a building or a specific site. You can break it apart whatever way you want. Now, if you're wanting to do sub-locations, the best way to do that is to go into your location and go into the asset management and then tag each of the locations as a sub-location. So, let, for example, let's say this HVAC here, we want to say this is on floor two. So we go ahead and click add a field. In this case, we're going to create a new field and we're going to call sub-location. and then say this is on floor one. Now what that does is allows me to know that this asset is in building A, and if I wanna grab any assets that are on floor one, I simply type that in here, and that filters my entire list of assets to just their sublocation. And then at that point, I can click view combined reports and find all of the reporting for all assets on floor one. And so this is another way of just breaking apart the locations. And you can actually uh, say, all right, this is on floor one and it's on room 23. And it's just a lot of great ways to break your assets apart. Now, when your technicians are actually doing tasks and they need to look up where that asset is at, you most definitely can add information in here to get really, really, really detailed. It's really helpful, powerful stuff. 
And that's basically adding um, uh, locations and managing locations. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us. You can send us an email at mel at limblecmms.com, or you can reach out to your dedicated CMMS advisor, or of course you can leave a comment in the section below and we'll do our best to respond to those there. We love hearing from our customers, uh, whether it's ways to improve the tool or ways to improve our tutorials, please don't be hesitant to reach out to us. Thank you very much for watching this tutorial and you have a great day.